Hi everyone, hope you're doing really well and welcome to this fifth video in the series on a recipe for extremely reproducible enrichment analysis. Just recall in the last video, we were um, customizing the R Markdown workflow to our needs and we confirmed that it was working in the Docker container. Uh, so now we kind of have to do all of the uh, downstream things to finish off. Um, and this includes updating the software repository, updating the Docker image and pushing that to Docker Hub uh, and long-term archiving. So uh, let's get things underway. Um, the first one will be to, uh, you'll recall that we copied out that uh, our markdown script back into the working directory. So now we have to push that uh, to the, uh, the, the repo. Um, and so here we are with our folder and the new file that we want to add is the RMD. This is probably also a good time to revisit the other items in the repository like the readme and uh, making sure that the other data files that we've got here are uh, appropriate. But so what we're going to do um, is also to um, uh, change a few things. So uh, let's have a look just quickly at the Docker file. All right, so it's got, uh, da, 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 that looks fine. Great. Um, I think we're fine now to do the git add. I'm just for the set seven one. And we're just going to work on that one. Git commit minus M. Uh, we'll say add it set seven KB analysis. All right. Uh, and then we can inspect the repository on GitHub to make sure it's all fine. There it is. That's been added just now. Okay, so the thing that we have to do now is update the Docker image. Uh, and the reason for that is that so if we have a look at the Docker image currently, it doesn't have that RMD file in there. Uh, so what we can do is run the entire um, building process from scratch using this no cache um, option, but that might take 20, 25 minutes. Uh, there is a faster way to do that, which would be to modify the Docker file slightly so that it uses some of the cached build data as much as possible. Um, and so we're going to replace uh, the this line in the Docker file with this one here. So what it does is it forces um, uh, an extra pull step here, and that will grab that the R markdown file. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. Uh, oops, copy. file. So the one that we're looking at changing is, oops, that's not it. I just used the board there. There we go. Um, and that backslash. Seven. All right, hit pull and then return back to the base directory. Okay, that looks like it's fine. So all of these steps here are going to be um, kind of drawn from the cache and skipped. They're not going to be repeated. And then this step here is going to be repeated with the, uh, the clone and the pull. So we're going to get all of the updated files and then it's going to, yeah, uh, finish things off for us, hopefully. So we want to do Docker build now. Um, yeah, Docker build.
Mm, okay, so it looks up. Oh, I did the wrong thing there. <laughs> I used the no cache option. I'll get rid of that. There we go. So now it's jumping straight to the um, that step. I think there was a problem. Well, oh, there always is. Um, so it's seven KD typo. Let's try that again. There you go, jumping straight into the clone, and boom, that's already done. So that's quite quick. Uh, the next one will be to push to Docker Hub, and this isn't strictly required, but it just makes um, sharing your image a bit easier. So it, we'll start with a Docker login. So if you don't have a Docker Hub account, you'll need to create that. And then you'll need to do Docker login. I've already logged in previously, but if you uh, haven't logged in before in this computer, then you'll need to enter in username, password, that sort of thing before you can do things. Um, and what we'll do is do Docker push that um, image. Docker push mz seven kd and it's going to push. Uh, I'm not sure how long that will take. Um, I'll assume it's going to take a while, so I'll pause the video. All right, so because I had a lot of that cached um, steps, uh, it was really quick, so that's fine. So now when we make our way over to Docker Hub, um, um, uh, sign in. Yep, set seven KD is there. So that's all good. Um, yeah, and while you're visiting this here, it's probably a good idea to put in a description. So um, I may seek analysis of the mm, set seven. Uh, you can provide some more information there um, about this. Uh, probably also, if you have a draft on BioArchive or something like that, you might want to link it. Um, this sort of uh, thing is very useful. There we go. Um, yeah, and also provide a link to the GitHub repo. We might do that now. It doesn't cost anything. Um, code. At... There we go. Doesn't like that. Maybe it doesn't want that. Not too long. Boom. Uh, yeah, and they can provide more information and metadata. Obviously, that's great. Um, all right, so. If you wanted to replicate this, um, it's relatively straightforward and I've covered it already in the first video, step five. Um, so you can go and look at that. The next step here is to ensure long-term archiving. Uh, and the reason for this is that Docker Hub, while it's convenient, it's not a guaranteed data archive. There are other Docker registries. The one I'm thinking of, that's the best one is BioContainers. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, what we, what we're recommending here is to think about really long-term archiving. Um, so we, we, what we can do is to provide a, um, a tar archive of our, uh, whole Docker image and popping that onto Zenodo. Zenodo is not-for-profit data archive supported by the CERN physics uh, lab. Um, so I think it's uh, relatively good. It's well placed for long-term um, retention for that, uh, for, you know, decades into the future. So we'll do this here. Um, I don't know if Docker save. So seven KD. Uh, and then pipe to gzip and then 
7 KD um, image dot tar dot GC. Uh, so that's going to save that image. It's quite a few gigabytes, so it's going to take a while. So I will skip. Okay, so that has completed. It took quite a while, um, but now we have our image, and that's pretty large. It's 1.6 gigabytes, um, and that there is your whole analysis uh, encapsulated. And if you wanted to run that on another computer, it would be uh, g unzip that um, uh, gzip file and then docker import the tar. Uh, and then you give it a name and the uh, username and the project name, and that will be imported with Docker. Uh, and then that using the steps in step five, that could be reproduced again. Uh, so when it comes to long-term archiving, we can upload this um, tar gz to Zenodo. So uh, it's fairly easy to use. Um, you would have to sign up first uh, and then uh, log in. I'll see if I can log in. I've forgotten my one. I'll try it orchid. Hopefully that's working. Okay, I was right. So it uh, has shown me that I'm logged in and I use this uh, upload button or that upload button there. Um, and I would go to new upload uh, and then provide that uh, tar GZ file mm. and provide all the necessary metadata, including links to, you know, Docker Hub or Bio Containers, um, your GitHub repository, if you've got a, a preprint on uh, BioArchive, for example, you would have uh, links to it there. Uh, and maybe some instructions on how to use that um, tar archive, for example, these uh, instructions here, plus some instructions out of uh, the first part of the protocol. So yeah, that's really it. Um, it's been really fantastic to show this uh, recipe to you. If you have any questions, of course, just leave them in the comments and I'll see to everything. Uh, and my details are also on this protocol here. So you can contact me uh, by email. Um, yep. Yeah, and thanks for, your, thanks for watching and um, bye for now.